Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a portfolio that pays your bills. Now I've just launched my 3 month update and if you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. I feel blessed to have been able to save and invest this much money and the portfolio is really coming along towards being able to pay my bills. But I was thinking what would it be like much further along on the journey? I thought you guys as viewers might be interested to see so I reached out to my friend and fellow YouTuber Matt from Matt Money to give us a brief overview of what a massive dividend portfolio could look like. I hope it can give you guys some stock ideas but mostly some inspiration like it has for me. Okay over to you Matt. Hey folks so uh, just making a video here for my buddy here dividend experiment so appreciate the opportunity to show you guys how I manage my portfolio and what my portfolio is all about. A little bit of background on myself is uh, I'm 28 years old, independent investor, living in Trinidad and Tobago as an American expat at the moment, down here for work currently, and basically just make YouTube videos in my free time to kind of get everybody uh, on board and track my progress and hopefully get some people into dividend investing. I manage my portfolio at the moment uh, via Apple Numbers, and this is basically what I use to manage the portfolio. Portfolio size at the moment is around $400,000 or so, uh, and that is basically just uh, part of it being my 401k, and part of it is being my dividend investment portfolio, and um, <clears throat> hopefully when this actually loads up, <laughs> we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, but generally what I talk about here is the total portfolio, which you can see is about $404,000. And about a third of it is in the 401k. So I can't really track too much progress associated with that other than capital gains. And then you have the dividend portfolio aspect of things, which holds anything from emergency cash all the way to monthly dividend paying stocks and even real estate. So how I manage the portfolio, generally speaking, is done by this, I guess, overall percentage breakdown, which is done by sector. And I kind of make these pie charts here to kind of understand on a more high level view on the right hand side what the portfolio value is and on the left hand side uh, or the left hand pie chart rather what the dividend percentage is coming by sector. So you can see each of the sectors here uh, basically broken out um, and then you can also see the dividend yield. Uh, on average by sector down here at the bottom. And if you're more of like a exact numbers table sort of person, you have that here on the left. Currently we're making about $995 uh, in dividends a month, which is awesome. It's gone up like 10 or so dollars uh, over the past week or so, just from reinvesting dividends and also a bunch of dividend raises coming through the portfolio, which maybe we'll talk about uh, in a second here. Overall dividend yield on the portfolio is about 4.33% and yield on cost is under 5% at 4.9% at the moment. Going into the actual portfolio breakdown and the value of the portfolio, 19% of it is coming from energy stocks um, and followed briefly, or sorry, followed by financial stocks and real estate coming in second and third. And then also you have consumer staples, which is growing a pretty big chunk as well. Healthcare with my AVI position and Johnson & Johnson is beginning to grow, was not nearly that big just over a year ago. And then you start getting into the smaller sectors. So we're getting a little bit more even with respect to the distribution of the size and value of each of the sectors. We have five or six really healthy sector allocations at the moment, although some of them are still overweight with respect to say energy, financials, and real estate. Uh, they could come down a little bit, but it's a lot better shape than it was in the past since I've been focusing on upping my industrials and real estate, or sorry, industrials and healthcare sector. So translating that into dividends, you can see obviously the majority of my energy stocks pay a lot larger of a dividend at about six and a half percent. If you look at this bar graph down here at the bottom, and then you also have financials paying about 16% and real estate's about on par with what the value is. Healthcare is about the same, eight percent versus nine percent in terms of dividends versus portfolio value respectively and everything else is rather minor so doesn't drastically change too much from the actual portfolio value versus the dividends except for really the energy aspect of things and that's just because it's so much over 
you get so much more dividends uh, and dividend yield coming from the energy position. So um, annual yield from the portfolio is around $11,951. I kind of already mentioned the $995 in terms of monthly income coming from the dividends. And actually looking at some goals here, if you're interested in that, you can see how the dividend progress on terms of annual dividends have kind of grown over time with the goal of 2020 being to get myself to about $14,000 strictly with dividends. Now, I remember some of you guys might be trying to back calculate some of the actual value coming from the portfolio. Um, and you might say, well, four point something percent yield off of, you know, $400,000 is going to get you roughly around 16 to $17,000 in terms of dividends, that's not really what you have. Yes, I am very aware of that. That's because all I can track at the moment is the $276,000 that is outside of my 401k and counts like my individual retirement account, individual brokerage account, and what have you there. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. What I am gonna to try to do is potentially roll these uh, for the 401k over into individual retirement accounts. Uh, and whether it's traditional or Roth, because I'm not trying to take any taxes or have any one-time tax events here. Um, so anyway, that's that. Um, feel free to edit that out as you wish. It might be a little bit too much for what you're looking for. But looking specifically at a company like AbbVie, we purchased about 113 shares over the course of a year or so when it dipped into the, from the about 100, dollar-ish range about a year, year and a half ago, down into the 60-ish range. And so we picked up shares on the way down, averaged in over time. Now we're sitting on about 116 shares with some dividends reinvested, almost a $2,000 gain from that, so about 23% over that time period. But what I'm mostly focusing on is the long-term dividends that I'm potentially going to get from uh, AbbVie, which is basically going to be coming from Allergan. You have a bunch of other stocks like BlackRock, Bryn Mawr Bank, uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, all financial stocks, all yielding me, you know, about 90, 210, $287 respectively. And then you have a decent amount of energy stocks in here as well, like my BP, BP Midstream Partners. Those yield me um, about twelve hundred maybe thirteen hundred dollars between the two of them just because in bp i have about 236 shares and then bpmp which is the midstream partners have about 500 shares I have caterpillar as an industrial stock that pays me about 157 dollars it's a pretty good one that i've recently picked up um, in terms of being added to the portfolio um, some other ones that i have the only I have very few non-dividend paying positions. One's Chesapeake, and that's just because I bought it at a bad price back in 2014, 2015. But you also have Alphabet. So I have four shares of Google, Alphabet, whatever you want to call it, that I picked up uh, when the price was about $1,100 or so, almost uh, just under $1,200 a share. So I'm up pretty good on that, 20% or so. Can't complain. Johnson & Johnson, I think, is the biggest part of the portfolio. $11,000 worth in the individual brokerage account, but I also have it in my M1 Finance account as well. Just in this count, it yields me about $276, which is awesome. Excuse me. You have Main Street Capital, which is potentially the second largest holding within the portfolio. I have about 140 shares in my individual brokerage account, but I have about 150 shares in my individual retirement account. So that makes it a pretty big position as well. Then you have 3M. I also hold another $3,500 or $4,000 of 3M in my M1 finance account as well. So that being said, uh, this is another decent part of the portfolio that gives me about 275 just in the individual brokerage account, but probably another 75 to $80 in the M1 finance account. Altery Group's pretty good. Uh, I have a smaller portion of this in computer shares. Um, 139 shares of Altria Group, or ticker symbol MO. Realty Income Corp, I've had a very long love and hate relationship with this one. Uh, have bought and sold a decent amount of times. I wish I never sold. I guess I will just put that bluntly. Um, I was very short-sighted when I was selling back in the day. Cost basis here is about 70 bucks, but uh, originally, I think when I first started buying it, it was in the low 40s. 
So at one point had over 200 shares with a cost basis of, I think, in the high 40s or low 50s, which I never sold. PepsiCo bought at a really good price about a, two years ago at about 98 bucks uh, when it dipped down from about the 120s to $98, about an $8,000 position that yields me just over $200 or $50 a quarter, which is awesome. Philip 66, about 43 shares of that. Gives me about 150 bucks a year, or almost 10 bucks a month if you want to look at it that way. I also had a lot larger a position in Royal Dutch Shell, but sold that when it hit a higher peak. But at the moment, we have about 60 or so shares, so pretty happy with that. Gives me about $228 a year. Um, you have some, I guess, auxiliary positions here, Cedro Partners. Uh, Stag Industrial is a good one. I purchased this uh, for I purchased 100 shares about in 2014 or early 2015. Reinvested some of those dividends. Now we're up to 26 additional dividends. Uh, port the position has grown from $2,000 to $4,100, and it yields me about $181, so about 15 bucks a month. Pretty good story. Up 93% overall on that one. Going to keep reinvesting those dividends. Starwood Property Trust is also a good discussion. Purchased at about 20 bucks. Um, purchased 50 shares, been reinvesting these dividends as well. Almost up 78%, getting $133 a year from that. Uh, AT&T is a really good one. Uh, purchased at 30, it dipped down from, I believe, over 40, then it dipped down to the 30s, even hit 28, $29 at one point. I purchased at 31, um, can't complain with that sort of price and have an $8,500 position, which gives me about $450 a year. U.S. Bank Corp is a relatively new position. If I get some money, I might continue to build this one up a little bit. Um, so far, so good on that one. Then you have uh, Verizon, which is a smaller position, um, but still ends up being about 110 shares worth, about 6500 bucks. Then you have Wells Fargo, 250 shares of that, which is going to give me about $500 a year in dividends. So the overall part of this portfolio, just under $7,000 a year in dividends. So uh, anywhere between 500 to $550 a month in dividends. So I can't complain with that one. Uh, all the other portions of the portfolio are a lot smaller than this. I believe this is about over 50% of the dividend portion of the portfolio. So hopefully the, some of these other ones go a little bit quicker. Uh, YouTube Moolah is rather small. It was mostly investing in ETFs. Uh, have a little bit of cash in here at the moment. But we have IJR, ITOT, IVV. These are basically S&P 500 small cap, total stock market, and S&P 500. They have a couple shares of Johnson & Johnson and 3M in here. Nothing too much to talk about. BHP is one of the best investments I've ever made. Um, purchase it all the way down, starting in the $40 range back in 2014, 2015. Continued to buy. Now I'm sitting at about 169% returns. Wish I had never sold. I had two, over 200 some shares originally at one point and I sold off 100 shares. Been reinvesting these dividends, uh, paid about 21 bucks for them. Now the price is about $45 or so. Um, getting about 43 or 430 bucks every single year from BHP. Cyrus One was a good pick back when I was looking at data storage, real estate investment trusts. Disney was a decent pick. Um, was kind of picking it for growth as well as dividend. I know it's a dividend raiser, but uh, you know, it has a relatively low starting yield. So had some problems trying to convince myself to buy that one, but I'm glad I did. We'll hold that one for the long term. First Solar is another stock that doesn't pay a dividend. Had 200 shares of this at one point as well, but I think I sold the other 100 shares when I kind of broke even now. I'm sitting at about a 70% gain on these, been holding it for a while though. Has been kind of sticking in this channel between 50 and 60 bucks for a year or two. Um, Lyndell Bezel Industries, LYB, don't know how to pronounce that too well, but uh, have about 51 shares of this. This is what I purchased, or part of what I purchased with my funding my Roth this year, the $6,000 that I put in at the beginning of the year. Uh, purchased about 4,600 bucks of this. I'm already sitting on a 300 some dollar loss. That's fine. In it for the long term dividends. It's got a decent cash flow here. I think it's a short term dip just based off of oil prices at the moment because our feedstock is oil price. And I guess they 
are able to price their commodities uh, or chemicals that they kind of get off of the oil price. So uh, Main Street Capital, here's another 157 share position of that, almost $400 a year in that um, position of Main Street Capital. 300 bucks a year in dividends from Philip Morris. Um, purchased at 92 bucks, so I'm sitting at a at a loss here, but because of the reinvested dividends, actually comes up just about breaking even. Then you have Virgin Galactic, which is another speculative play here that I've purchased um, about the 1550 range. So uh, nothing wrong with that. Plan on holding that one forever. Like I said, mostly dividend paying stocks, but uh, there is some speculative plays in here that are very small. Um, comparatively to the rest of the portfolio. Then you have WP Carry, which is a triple net lease company, just like Realty Income Corp. And I hold this bad boy for the dividends as well. This one's dipped pretty good. Um, price is down to 50. Oh, sorry. I got really confused. Uh, I thought I was looking at uh, WP Carry. I was like, I'm going to back up the truck if the price of WP Carry is down to 59. 84, okay, that's where I was kind of expecting it to be. So very good with respect to that, $320 a year in dividends. And looking at, you have another few shares of Johnson & Johnson and 3M here, um, basically getting us to, you know, uh, a couple hundred bucks a year in terms of dividends. And you have some Visa shares as well, um, getting you just over or just under $200 a year in dividends from the M1 finance account. Added about another $250 earlier this week to Robinhood uh, when it hit February 1st, looking at about $13 in dividends for this portfolio. It's one or two shares of each, uh, potentially going to grow my utilities position here using Robinhood. Uh, if you look at Southern Company here, it might be dipping into a decent price cooling off a little bit. The you know, computer shares, which is something I haven't really touched too much, just under $700 a year in dividends from computer shares. We have Altria Group again. We have a small position in WTR, which is Aqua America. It's a water utility company, $24 a year in dividends from that. Decent position here in Exxon, sitting at about $1,000 capital loss, which is fine with me. Um, I'll be reinvesting these dividends for a long time. Uh, I think at the moment, Exxon is well positioned for the future. If you're looking strictly at oil stocks, now if you're looking about energy stocks and the transition from, say, oil and gas to solar, those companies that would win that are BP and Shell at the moment, in my opinion. And I need to look more at, say, Total and Equinor and see how they are doing with respect to their energy transition because I've been reading a little bit about them, but I don't know it off the top of my head. IBM, been holding that for a while, reinvesting those dividends, finally actually starting to see a profit on these after the price has actually gone up slightly over time. Just under 40 bucks a year in dividends. Philip Morris, again, over just over 100 bucks again in dividends. About 22 shares with Philip Morris. You have some more, alt, uh, sorry, Realty Income Corp here about $14 in terms of dividends a year, just over a dollar a month. You have Clorox for about four or five shares, and then you have waste management for about 300 and some shares. Um, and I guess for your sake, uh, I might have to hide some of this stuff. Uh, so just bear with me if I end up having to hide some of this material because some of it is personal related. Um, you have some more AVI here and shareholder services, GIS. There's a few, uh, a few stock or a few, sorry, a few shares in that McCormick and PG, all relatively small in comparison to the rest of the portfolio. Then you have Fundrise here, which um, have about uh, $2,300 or so in Fundrise, giving me about $100 a year in terms of dividends and. Uh, Fundrise is, yeah, rather simple uh, that that way. And here is kind of what I have to hide. So I'm going to hide that here, hid. Um, so moving from Fundrise to, as to Cardone Capital, we uh, have an additional real estate position within Cardone Capital. I invested about $15,000 in that, and with that, it gives me about... 4.5% yield a year at the moment, uh, although we were talking about initially with my investment getting around a 6% yield, something I have yet to see. 
more will hopefully come from this, but this gives me about 53 or so dollars a month in terms of income directly to my bank account, which is nice. Expecting to get a K-1, <clears throat> excuse me, a K-1 form this year for taxes, for 2019 taxes rather. And curious to see with, with this investment in real estate, if it allows me to write off a portion of the dividends um, just based off the fact that I'm investing in real estate and I get depreciation from the property um, rather than just, I guess, having normal dividends where you can't do something like that. And then you see the $18,000 or so that I'm holding in my personal savings account. And with that, uh, I'm getting about $311 or so in terms of dividends. So anyway, uh, really hope this video finds you guys good. Hope it finds you well. Hope that was useful to kind of give you a brief overview of the portfolio. You can kind of get an idea as to account values versus dividends and looking at how many different accounts I kind of have and how much they're kind of stacked. Individual brokerage accounts, obviously the largest. Um, but uh, yeah, currently the market's sitting at all-time highs, so just continuing to add to the portfolio month after month uh, and continuing to add to the portfolio where I see any sort of value I can. And yeah, that's the portfolio. Hope you guys really enjoyed, and I'm sure I'm going to be kicking it back to Dividend Experiment. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll let him finish up the video. Thanks, Matt, for your pretty in-depth overview of different stocks in your portfolio, as well as showing us how much you receive in dividends. If anyone has any questions about the portfolio, I'm sure Matt will be hanging around to check and see what anyone's saying too. And if any of you viewers like the spreadsheet shown here, you can actually buy it from Matt's site and he's kindly given any of my subscribers 15% off if you use the link in the description with a discount code which is made especially for my subscribers. This is the first collaboration of 2020 and I'm open to doing more so if you're watching and interested, just let me know. If you think the dividend experiment is interesting, then please feel free to subscribe. I buy a new stock every month, give you an update on how they're doing each quarter, and plenty of videos in between. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you on the next video. See ya.